Hi, my name is Carol and I work as an educational researcher for a large not-for-profit educational organization. So educational research in a broad sense is just using research methods and statistics to answer education related questions. Questions about students and student learning and what relates to student learning, um, teachers and teaching, and classrooms, schools, or school systems. So as you can imagine, it's, it's pretty broad. For me, a typical day is consisting mostly of project work, project related work. So at any given point in time, I am working on anywhere from three to five different research projects. So what I do in a given day is dependent on where I am in the research process for each of those projects. So I might be in meetings for a portion of the day where we're you know, talking about research question and brainstorming ideas or talking about what uh, research design would be the most appropriate to answer those questions. I might spend some time collecting data, um, you know, either uh, finding or administering surveys or questionnaires or conducting focus groups or interviews if we're collecting qualitative data. I might spend a portion of my day at my computer, at my desk, um, analyzing data once we've got it. You know, if it's, it, we, we either are using qualitative data analytic techniques or we're using some kind of statistical software to help us analyze quantitative data or numeric data. Um, so that requires me to be at my desk. Um, at that point, if, it's a if the project's a little further along and we've, got, we've already run our analyses, um, I might spend my time interpreting the, re the results, um, writing reports, or um, creating presentations that we'll use to present those, the results of the study to someone else. So it's pretty varied, um, and I would say that that takes up the most of my day, the, the largest portion of time during my day. However, there is a smaller portion of time that's more kind of logistical things. So um, checking my email, responding to email, making phone calls, filling out timesheets. We have to keep track of um, how much time we spend on each project for budgeting purposes. So that's a, a much smaller but still, um, still a, a part of my day. In terms of the work week, I work anywhere from 40 to 45 hours on a given week. I don't typically work nights and weekends, um, but I do occasionally if I've got you know a couple deadlines coming up and I'm not going to meet them, um, or if I have a report that I need to finish, I will work at night or on a weekend to, to get that finished up. Um, but you know overall, I don't normally work more than 45 hours a week or so. Our business hours officially are 9 to 5.30, um, but my office where I work is pretty flexible. I like to come in around 7.30 and leave around 4. Um, I have colleagues that come in at 9.30 and leave around 6. So depending on where you work, you might have more or less flexibility as to your work hours. In terms of stress level, I would say that my job is moderately stressful, and that stress mostly comes from um, having deadlines and the fact that my projects are, you know, I'm kind of in charge of my own projects, so um, I, I'm in charge of them getting on, done on time within budget, so there's, a, there's a, a moderate amount of stress related to that. I would imagine it's not nearly as stressful as a job where your, your pay is tied to what you produce, like a sales job or a medical doctor, we're not saving lives, um, but to, to the extent that I want to do a good job and want to get things done on time you know, it is moderately stressful. So to get a job as an educational researcher, you need at least a bachelor's and master's degree. Now some companies won't hire researchers that do not have a PhD, and those that do, your options are going to be a little bit limited in terms of what you're asked to do and your opportunity for career growth. So I would say that if you're at all interested in this type of job, go ahead and plan towards working towards a PhD. Now, in order to be prepared for this type of job, um, you'll need a PhD in an area like research, evaluation, measurement, psychometrics, 
or related fields. My degree is in assessment and measurement and it had a very heavy emphasis on research methods, research design, um, data analysis, and applied statistics. So degrees that emphasize those things are going to be good bets for you. Most of the time these degrees are either in psychology or education departments, so as you're looking at them you might want to look there. Um, but there are certainly some other degrees that are that are relevant, you know, um, education or sociology are also good options. In terms of bachelor's and master's degrees that will prepare you for this PhD program, um, they're also going to be in similar areas, psychology or education, um, sociology. I've even got colleagues who have um, degrees in um, computer science or um, economics. So all of those are options if you're considering this as a career path. Now there aren't any licensure or certification requirements for this type of job, but there are things that you can do while you're in school to help you get ready for this type of job. When you're an undergraduate, I would say absolutely get involved in a professor's research while you're there. This is going to give you a great opportunity to try research out, see if you like it, um, and help you begin to build those skill skills. It's also going to help you get into graduate school. Um, a lot of times graduate programs can be pretty small and fairly selective, so if you've already begun developing those skills, it's going to make you look more attractive to graduate programs. Now once you're in grad school, continue to look for ways to um, practice your research skills and apply what you're learning in class. You know, do research with your faculty members, with other students. Um, if you have the opportunity, look for internships. A lot of research and testing organizations offer internships to graduate students and it's a great way to get, in, get out in the real world, see what it's really like, um, continue to build those skills, and also network with, with folks who eventually might be hiring. So these internship opportunities really look very attractive to potential employers. So one of the best things about my job and one of the things that I like the most about it is the, is the fact that I have a lot of variety. As I said, at any given point in time, I'm working on anywhere between three and five different projects at once. And I really like the fact that um, I can do one thing in the morning um, and then shift gears and work on something completely different in the afternoon. So I'm not doing the same thing all day every day. Um, <clears throat> it definitely is interesting, it keeps me interested, it keeps me on my toes, and I really like that. The other thing that I really like about my job, and I would say this is one of the best things, is the fact that um, it might have some kind of positive impact on students. It might make a difference. Um, it might improve education in some way, and that for me is really fulfilling and gratifying, and I, I really like that about my job. Now on the flip side, there are some things that are, are not so great. Um, and one of those is the fact that it can be difficult to handle multiple projects at once. I know I just said that this is one of my, my favorite things, but it also can be challenging to shift gears. Um, sometimes I feel like I'm spread a little bit too thin. Um, it's hard to juggle um, more than one thing at once. Um, it just means you have to have really great time management skills. I would say that there are also some challenges associated with the fact that I work in a corporate setting and one of the one of these challenges is the fact that we're not necessarily as free to decide what we work on as say a professor who's work at a university or a college who's working on their own research. Um, so we don't necessarily get to decide what we work on, rather our research projects come from a need that has to be met. Um, so it's not necessarily as um, free as some other places where you might work on research, but you know, it, it's, for the most part it's still very interesting and, and worthwhile work. As for final advice for someone who's considering this type of job, I would say a couple things. First and foremost, get involved in research as early as possible. This is really going to give you the best opportunity to see if you like it and to start developing those skills that you'll need in this type of job. Second, I would say if you can, learn about what's going on in education at a large, at a large scale. Um, you know, take a look at the educational policies that are out there. A lot of times research is driven by policy, so if you know, if you understand that, you're going to have a better understanding about why you're doing the work that you're doing and why you're answering the types of questions that you are. 
And finally, um, one last bit of advice would be to stick with it. This job requires a lot of schooling. You're going to need a bachelor's, you're going to need a master's, you're probably going to need a PhD, and that takes a lot of time. And it's going to be difficult, it's going to be hard at times, sometimes it might feel impossible, but um, it's completely doable if you just stick with it. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's a really fulfilling career. So it's, it's worth the effort.